All right. I haven't been looking forward to this one. This is a match from over a month ago now. And it's a painful one for me. Um... Yeah, I banned Yatsuha A1. Um, I have a lot of reactive characters, and Yatsuha's on uh, the Abyss play is pretty counter to that. Even Yatsuha's normals in general don't get uh, you don't get to handle them well as Okoyo. Um, Mizuki can kind of deal with some of that stuff with Shield Soldier, but even that's pretty. Difficult. And this matchup's just really bad, and I didn't take everything into consideration that I probably should have. Anyway, this is what I wound up with. Thought about dousing for a long while. Went with analyze instead. I think that was probably fine, although it would have been maybe okay to throw uh, argue back in Shinra's face at some point. I don't think Erling plays Sophism in this entire game, which is interesting. He holds it in his hand for bulk of it. I decide to bottom analyze and Sonic Stage both. That's uh probably fine. It makes sense to de to have analyze on the bottom because you need time to build your mech and. Sony stage is probably better towards the end of this shuffle phase. I immediately focused twice. Early I moved up once. That was kind of signaling that he wanted the sophism me. And so instead of moving up, I just focused. But as to why I focused twice, eh, there's not really a, a good explanation. I wanted to empty my hand because of uh, having breakpoint in hand, so I could replay it next turn and put those two cards back on the bottom of my deck. Um, and I'm also trying to focus aggressively because I want to put Hollow Blossoms on as early as possible in this game, so I can try to gain some kind of life lead so I can pressure Erling to try and hit my aura, which is going to be difficult for Shinra Tokyo to do. Typically. Um, Erling, of course, brings Endless Wind into this matchup, though, and that's a problem for me to deal with as Tokoyo Kuru, because obviously I'm going to have a lot of non-attack cards with that pair, even though I only brought one Kuru card. Um, okay, so it hits my breakpoint. Then he's going to play Sony Stage just to resurge it. Okay, now this play um, is a little bit um, I know we're in sophism range at this point. I have no R to move backwards. There's literally only possible for me to move backwards if I were to spend air or take this R and move, which I don't really intend to do. Um, could have theoretically just pass there with one bigger. Instead, I go down to zero vigor and focus. Um, I was fully intending to play around argue this turn, trying to go just into range of that so I could back up when he tries to play it. And that works out, except for having done this, 
and gain the vigor, I don't have a way to uh, one, I set myself up to take life damage from uh, Perpetual Wind, which is terrible, and you never want to take a 1-1 one -one of life. And two, I uh, end up having no way to cancel Glancing Strike, which I wasn't even considering that Erling brought for whatever insane reason when I was doing my deck building and, and playing at the game at this point. I was like, okay, he's Shinra, he's going to play a bunch of, like, argue, he's going to play his... I guess he wouldn't bring Protest into this matchup. But, you know, he'll have his his own reactions, his ways to counter my things, and he'll, he'll bring the Tokoyo enhancements for Prove the Nature later. But instead, he brought a very attack-heavy deck. Well, maybe that's misconstruing it, because he does have, um... Or other cards, so he just keeps replaying Glancing Strike a lot because he managed to, just to stay at two vigor pretty much the entire game. So here's Hollow Blossoms online. Yay, I get to go back up to five aura or lock myself. It's probably a bit of a mistake. I could have uh, moved up first, and then I had to deal with the aura lock situation. I get less value out of doing the hollow blossoms that way, but I also am less penalized by it. And it doesn't really make sense to play the hollow blossoms when I have no means to activate it either. Hmm, but I do, okay. That's right. I remember what I, what I considered eventually. So Erling's just going to go for the easy glancing strike here, straight to the top. I take this to life, and I think Erling passes here or something. Um, I did also want to make a reaction there. I just realized it nine times, like afterwards. Um... That's me go to six aura, and that forces Erling to perpetual wind, knock me back down to five. This is the only time Drain Devil gets played in this matchup because uh, Erling has too many ways to circumvent endless snows resurgence condition. He can do it through eloquence and also through um, sunny stage. So it's just completely. A garbage card, and I don't even think I get the flare effect. It's like a one flare, one one, with not even that great of range. It gives me mechanism, is probably the only thing that's good about it. Now, right here, breakpoint isn't that good. Gives me the two aura from Shadow, but it keeps me in his attack range, and I know he's going to redraw a Glancing Strike. And I also don't have any cards to put back into my deck, so I do move that out. I might have been correct to take a basic action with the the breakpoint instead. No, oh, yeah, a little correction there. I pulled one Shadow at first. And Erling is just going to song and dance his way back to range four.
chorus is going to. Oh, and then he had perpetual wins to get the uh, card out of my hand in case it's song and dance. And then glancing strikes. And it was back to range. E. My Hollow Blossoms goes off and deals one life damage to him. But this game is already lost. Like, I've been hit twice by Glancing Strike. Yeah, twice by Glancing Strike, once to life by Perpetual Wind. I am way too far behind to catch up at this point. And my plan is up in smoke. I was trying to get an early life lead and just pressure with Hollow Blossoms, but I wound up taking life damage. Out the, out the ass, and there's like, look, I, I'm two life behind already, and that's after doing life damage with Hollow Blossoms, it's over. Like, there's nothing I can do here to get myself back on the board. Now what I could have done, theoretically, to play around the Perpetual Wind, once I was aware of it, was just always hold two cards in hand. Hold two cards and... Um, and have a, another non-attack card to discard to keep Song of Dance around so that I could dodge Glancing Strike. But again, I wasn't even considering Glancing Strike on those earlier turns. And by the time that I realized Glancing Strike could be a problem, it was already too late. And I'd already used Song and Dance to avoid Argue, which was... I mean, kind of, it's kind of annoying to get hit by Argue, but it wasn't really the problem this match. And then Erlang seals uh, Windy Stage, which probably correct. It's a very potent card for me. It's basically like a light damage and a turn where Erlang can't do anything to me because I go to range to zero. And this play is just forced. I don't I think I could have just waited. I know I have an attack card in my discard pile from the argue because I didn't draw it. If I had drawn it, that would have been another life damage to Erling, which would have been good. Um No glancing strike is offline, so it's not the worst to move back right here, but this attack is just going to be one aura damage, and there's nothing else it's going to do. It's never going to resurge from the endless snow. I get a life damage from Analyze. And I hold Song and Dance. I don't know why I hold Song and Dance. I think it was mainly like... Oh, I guess it evens my reshuffle. There's that. Assuming it doesn't get forced discarded or make a reaction. Okay, and then we play Breakpoint just to get to Aura. Pretty weak as throughout when you don't have anything in your plate or discard piles. But this lets me um, threaten with Hollow Blossoms some more. But like I was saying earlier, this game is kind of already over. It doesn't really matter what I do. 
I don't think that play is necessarily bad because it means he can't disable my Hollow Blossoms with a single Perpetual Wind. He just passes the turn. And then takes the Hollow Blossoms damage. Alright, here I throw out the awe strike as a 2-1 uh, vanilla. He's at 2 vigor, so I don't get to choose where the damage goes. So I'm thinking here I can hit his aura to make it harder for him to flash build focus. And then he ends up taking it to life instead, which honestly sends me a very scary signal. Specifically, like, he doesn't think that there's any danger of me killing him, which is understandable, but also that he wants the flare more, which means uh, I'm screwed. Like, <laughs> when he takes two ones to life, knowing that I have no punish to for if he takes his aura, that's like him acknowledging that that's how far ahead he is in the game. <clears throat> Okay, Perpetual wins the song and dance out of my hand and argues me. Um, I don't have enough cards in my deck at this point, so argue just go straight to Aura. He was patiently holding argue to be able to do it that way. That's what... Okay, so... I held one card to make my reshuffle even, but I forgot that my deck was uh, an even number now because of the song and dance... Or the song and dance, because of Windy Stage being sealed. So I, I was confused by that and thrown off. So I should have honestly uh, not held the card in my hand. Or held two cards for the reshuffle. Okay, Sunny Stage to my Sunny Stage. Game looks really even now, but that's just because he hasn't played Prove the Nature yet. Okay, instead of playing Glancing Strike face up, I discard it and play Analyze. Kind of like playing Rabbit Step into Glancing Strike. Kind of, if you, if you squint really hard. I go back to 5 Aura, it doesn't matter, my Aura doesn't do anything in the matchup. Except protect me from perpetual wind, but I'm smart enough to do that. Okay, Song of Dance is back to range four. Then links me with Glancing Strike again. And then focuses once and drops through the nature and eloquence, and that's it. That's that's the whole game. Game is turned in. Can I survive for three turns? The answer is no. Play with a reshuffle here.
think there's a good chance Dowsing would have been a better card than Analyze. It might even be an argument for taking a Mosul and doing an action economy build where I just try and build up a bunch of flair to keep Shinra from being able to play enhancements easily. Not that those were really a problem. No. I think... Actually, one thing I had considered, which would have had merit, was Reflecta. Um, if I could play Reflecta, that stops uh, him from doing Perpetual Wind into Glancing Strike, because after he does Perpetual Wind, the next attack he plays gets cancelled. Um, is that good enough? I don't know. Also, I should definitely have brought something else instead of Endless Snow. I could have brought... Um, Godly Intervention, seal one of his cards back, counter seal. Or, um. Stealing Proves the Nature probably would have been a terrible idea, unless I was running a ton of enhancements. That would have been hilarious. I don't know. There were other ways I could have built for sure, and I could have played it better in the early stages. I just wasn't thinking straight. Anyway, yeah, there's nothing I can do here. I'm looking at my cards like, eh, is there any way I don't dive coursers? And I think I was actually just talking post game with him now, but I still play this out for some reason. That's the game. Suffering, at least it was short. 